Hey guys and gals, Malku 1974 coming here. We're going to cover a little bit of how the new contract system works, custom contracts, and the new random contract system. Uh, we did cover the little the actual random contracts in another video, but it has been expanded a little bit, and now you actually have the ability to have three separate uh, different categories of random contracts that can pop up in the 24 hour period that the game actually does its check and I actually have you know some cheating tools here to show you how every check will actually go and that is open in the dev build too if you guys want to check that out but that's what that button does if you guys are wondering it won't be available in the final build alright so uh, the categories are basically uh, special missions which are like the orbital fuel test and uh, the repair mission uh, Spear of Influence uh, missions, which are just basically all the missions that are in Kerbal, Kerbin's Spear of Influence. So anything that has to do with Kerbin, you know, uh, satellites, uh, moon missions, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. And there's a new uh, launch rover mission to other spheres of influence that I just added. These are still in the early stages. Uh, these are going to be expanded to include goals of, I don't know quite how it's going to work yet, but right now they're pretty simple. Uh, they can't have any crew on them. And basically what you have to do is go to the planet, orbit it, and then land on it with a rover and you get science points for it and uh, mission points for it. Now, when you are in here, you got three options, but you can only select one of these, and the other two will actually go away. So, say we want to go, ah, I want to launch a rover. So, we just ex use the accept button right next to it, and now that is a loaded mission that we can actually play. If we go back to contracts, the only mission available is launch rover to, to uh, Duna. The newest thing that we have is custom user contracts. That's what I just added. And we bring up this new mission and it gives you a basic gist of how it works and uh, the limitations of it and everything else. Uh, basically you can make your own contracts and when you're done with the contract you can push this button down here that send contract for bidding and you'll send it out and a company will pick it up and they will give you a payout. The payouts are all different based on the companies that are giving them and you know there's a lot of different things so one of the things you can do so you can change you can make your own mission name so let's just call this we'll call it contract test mission you can give a small description and we'll just say this is just a ah, I always do that just a test for a video <clears throat> And then we'll come down here and it's going to say, if vessel has crew or not, this makes a difference with payouts. Now what that means is, now if your vessel is just going to be, you know, an unmanned vessel, then you're going to want to select fault and then set goal. Because what it will do, it will, it will actually set in the mission that there should not be any Kerbals on board this vessel. And you, it's, it's a mission goal. It comes out as a mission goal and it, you have to follow it. But, if you want to have a crew, then you just go to true. And what pops up is how many crew are going to be on here. Now this part's in, important. If you, th for every crew you add, you add a higher payout to your mission. So, if it's one crew, you'll get the minimum payout for having one crew. If it's two, you can have two. You know, it keeps going up, and you can put up to a billion in here. The, the, the thing is that you can't really cheat the system as far as I know yet because the mission is going to be looking for 21 crew members at launch to be on that vessel. So if you're going to add 21 crew, you best have 21 crew on the vessel when it launches. Uh, for right now, we'll just go, we'll say this is a one-man crew. All right. So I got everything set. So can't really do anything much more so what we need to do is we need to set goal so I set the goal and as you can tell nothing's changed out here because of one thing you have to do every time you set a new goal you have to load the new you have to reload the contract and when you reload the contract 
it will say contract test mission. This is just for a test video or or whatnot. And now it's going to ask for a goal type. So the first goal type we want to actually do is, and if you're wondering where uh, the um, you don't see the well, well, you'll see in a second. I know what you're thinking. What happened to the uh, the crew member? We'll wait a second here. So there's actually a few goals in here. We got orbit goal, landing goal, docking goal, crash goal, and then none. So right now that's all we can make. It's pretty much the the whole gist of what you do in space if you actually think about it. So we're gonna do an orbit goal, and what I want to do is I want to put a guy over the moon. So we want to go. So we set orbit goal. Now our next object is to set where are we going to orbit. We don't want to. Go, we can orbit at Corbin. And I'm going to show you this. So the first thing we want to do is orbit at Corbin. Or if you want to just go to the moon, you can go to the moon or Minmus or Duna, Ike. All the planets are in here that you can go to. <clears throat> but my first orbit is going to be Corbin. Now up here, we're going to set what we want our orbit to be. And since we're going to launch from Kerbin, and then we're going to launch the moon, we probably want it pretty low. So we'll set it at 80 and we'll set the apoapsis at 80. So that's your high point in the orbit. And we'll set the low point to 70. So basically when you launch, you want to have your vessel between 80 and 70 for both apoapsis and periapsis. So that's all set. Set the new orbit goal. We'll load it up. And there we go. What's going to happen is we're going to see the body that we're, our first orbit is going to be at is Kerbin. And the min periapsis is 70, min apoapsis is 70, max is 80, so max is 80. So basically what this is setting is that anywhere between those two, you're all set. And down here you'll see our crew count. It's going to be looking for one crew member when you launch this vessel. Next goal, we want to go to the moon. And so we're going to make another orbit goal. Now this is where the limitations of the custom contract maker comes in. You can only have two orbit goals. It's the only goal that you can have two of. Everything else can only have one for now. It might change later as I develop it a little bit more. And the only reason I did that because I knew some people would want to, you know, fly to, say, Duna, but then they want to go to Ike. So you want to orbit Duna first and then go to Ike. Really, it's kind of hard to hit Ike from here, but you know, so it's basically the same idea. So right now, I want to go to the moon, and the moon, we want to be about 50. Now, let's make it 60 for the high point, and we'll make, uh, we'll make it like that. So between 60 and 50, when we get to the moon, we want to be there. So again, you got to set orbit, and then you got to load it again, and then we look down here, and now we have an orbit goal for the moon, which is cool. So we're going to orbit the moon. We're going to check it out, uh, maybe land if we want, and then we're going to come back. And unfortunately, this is one of the big limitations of the thing right now. I have to figure out how to make this work correctly. And I'm not going to get into the video, but you can only have one landing goal. You can only have one docking goal, and you can only have one crash goal. Obviously, if you crash the vessels, it doesn't matter for that anyway. And it's just because of the way that the the programming saves and it's it's something I'm trying to work out but it's not it's not working out well so I I just basically came up with this system you make simple missions for what you want to do all right so we're gonna actually just land at Kerbin so we're gonna go orbit Kerbin orbit the moon and then when we come back we're just gonna land at uh, Kerbin again because we do have one crew and as you can tell it's still saying we need one crew count we got this orbit. It's still going to be looking for that crew member on the second orbit. Okay, so just, let's just remember that. So we're going to set the landing goal, and we're going to load the contract. So now this is a fully-fledged mission that will work if you load it up. <clears throat> and, you know, it's, it's nice, it's good, you know, but you don't see any payments. Well, that's because you don't actually see the payments until you push send contract for bidding, because that's what it means. We're going to send the contract out for bidding, and we're going to see what, what we can get for this mission. So I'm going to send it out. Have to load mission again. And there we get. Now, we got a pretty good payer here. These guys, uh, Corbella Aerospace and Flight Dynamics, they pay very well. They're actually one of the, they're pretty rare to get. So it's kind of funny that I got them. 
And they're going to pay us 266,000 credits to do this mission, which is pretty cool. Awesome, right? Right. And, you know, at any other time, it could be only 155,000 from another, another company might only pay you 155,000. You know, it's just, it's just, it's just the luck of the draw you get when you send it out for bidding. So we are pretty much done with this. And at this point, the mission is ready to go. You'd go fly the mission. You'd, you'd, you'd make all your goals, your orbit goals, and you come home and you land and the mission would finish out. And, you know, just like any other mission, you would, uh, uh, get paid when you landed by the final goal, and that would be that. So you're all done with the mission, and now what we want to do is make another mission. So you come back into here, and you just go down to Reset Contract. Again, you have to go to Load, and now the whole contract system is reset. We can rename it. Uh, we can uh, do the description. Does Vessel have tr uh, have uh, crew? No, no, this time we don't have crew. So that goes away. We set the goal, load contract. Now we can see the first goal is no crew goal. So when you launch, you better not have any crew on the vessel when you launch. That's what that goal is looking for, just to make sure people aren't cheating and stuff like that. Our next goal type is, say, uh, uh, let's... let's uh, Let's do a orbit goal again around Kerbin. We'll set it up at 90, 90 and 80, and between 90 and 80. You can make it more tight if you want, but you know this helps you decide where you want to go. We load the mission again. This time uh, we want to dock with a vessel up there, so we'll just switch to docking, and we'll load the docking. Actually, why can't I do docking? Yeah, probably some, probably just another problem I have. Yeah, we'll get that fixed. <laughs> Every once in a while we get. So now let's say we're going to do a crash goal. We want to do a crash goal to the moon. So we'll set that as the moon. Set crash goal. We'll load it up. And contract type is orbit. Contract goal is crashing. So it's going to crash on the moon. And, you know, now this is another bid. We send it out for bid. Load it back up. And there we go. Gonna, these guys are only going to pay us 40000 to crash a satellite into the moon. Now, let me tell you right now, the way the mission decides what it's going to pay you is that it pays you by the amount of goals you have. So I actually skipped the goal. I could actually got more payment for this mission if I would have actually said orbit the moon, too. It probably would have gave me almost, probably would have brought it to about 100000 they would have paid for this mission. So the more goals you have, the more you'll get paid. But you can't, you know, you can't cheat it, and, you know, because you'll have to actually do the goal. So if you like, well, I'm going to launch over Kerbin, and I'm going to dock, and then I'm going to fly to Duna, and then I'm going to land at Duna. Well, you're going to have to launch, you're going to have to dock, and then you're going to have to fly to Duna, and then you're going to have to land at Duna. So, you know, you will have to, you will have to do the goals if you put them in. So, that's about it, guys. I will get that, uh, docking problem fixed out there in, in a little bit. But that is basically how it works. So, this is Malkuth1974. We'll see you later. Malkuth out.